So I just wanted to do a video kind of going over the process I had to do to fix my Huey on Canvas 22 plus. Um, I started having issues over the last couple months with it. I've had it for just over four years or just under four years now. And yeah, I just started having issues. So I thought maybe it was a driver. So I checked all the drivers. Uh, those were all up to date both on my tablet and my PC. So I thought maybe it could be the cable. So with this, it usually comes with the three in one plus a UBC, USB C cable. And I figured maybe just the USB cable was going out on the three in one. So I tried just connecting the USB C with it and I was still getting a USB malfunction and so I was getting to the point where well maybe I'll order a new cable so I did do that but then I came across a post where a lot of other people were having the same issue with the 22 and 22 plus and I think even with maybe some of the others uh, so it was kind of a a quick fix for it and you're literally so in these tablets there's two boards you have the board that the three-in-one is plugging into which uh, powers the display and everything and my display on mine still worked like I could have used it as just a extra monitor with nice colors but I wanted to see if there was any way of fixing it so I don't have to go out and spend another $500 or more depending on what tablet I get. Because I, I do like my Huey on one. I've really never had any issues until now. And from what I was reading, most of the people in there said that their tablets, usually in that three to four year range, the um, it just starts going out. So I could just no longer is detecting the pen and whatnot but yeah the way these tablets are is this one because I've cracked it open like three times now there's two different boards the one that powers the monitor and then it's wired to a second board which I'm assuming is just the tablet part so this mod pretty much eliminates that wire that's bridging the two and then you're just adding a second wire that is connecting to the tablet board itself um, and some of the people have soldered and then others did the uh, just a connector and I I went the connector route um, I still had to solder the connectors to the USB I'm not gonna go over that uh, there's probably tons of soldering videos on YouTube uh, for this it's just a matter of making sure you're soldering the correct pin to the correct color. So uh, the USB cables, uh, it's just a type A, USB type A cable. So the one I got was just an Amazon. I'll post everything I purchased in description. Um, and then you just need like a, a screwdriver and a, uh, well, two different types of screwdrivers. One was bigger and then one was uh, smaller, closer to like a glasses type screwdriver. Um, and then if you have a thing to split the case open, I just used a screwdriver. I mean, kind of damaged my, uh, outer shell a little bit, but I'm not too worried because my tablet works again. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I've had the tablet for four years, so I did not have a warranty anymore. It was up. Uh, I wrote Huey on, they have yet to ever respond to me. So, but yeah, I'm just going to go over the process that I had to do to uh, get it to work again. And then I will post links for the original post that I found as well as everything I purchased. So. All right, so tearing down, you've just got screws around the perimeter. And then you're going to have one little screw that's going to be under your label and it's pretty much under the SN. I've kind of peeled mine away and you can see it's right there. So 
And then the other one, obviously there's one in this corner under that void sticker. So obviously if you're still under warranty, probably don't attempt this. Contact them for uh, help on that. So just start undoing all these. Okay, and then obviously, like most electronics, it is clipped. The seam obviously is right here. So um, there are tools to do that. I just kind of use a flathead screwdriver, just carefully going around. popping it up around the display. broke that one so yeah do be careful when pulling that off all right so that back piece is off so now you will have that so when mine first started happening I thought it was just one of the connectors but the solders on those are good so um, other people have figured out it was this cable so what they do is they just remove this cable and then you will just replace with the uh, USB cable with uh, a new end to it so you just need to pull these out careful and this one it looks like it does have like a glue this one kind of had a piece of tape on it and just to make sure those obviously don't come loose A little wiggling and that came out okay do remember what way this is facing so yeah you're gonna have your red the black white green and a bigger black so that is done like that So that, just like so. And then you will just plug in the new cable. So I will do that. Okay, so you have the cable that connected to these two boards and it's just, um, this side's four, this side's five, but you're only gonna use the four on this because I think this was just splitting the ground to ground the two boards together. So the ones that matter is the red, black, the small black, the white, and the green. So what I did is I took the, I just took a USB cable, a USB type A cable, regular USB to uh, the smaller USB, and I just soldered on two JST connectors. And then I um, 
made sure the layout of the wires. So, you know, red's the furthest this way, then the, the black, the white, and the green. And those will match the same colors as the wires that are in the USB cable already. So I just soldered those up to those. And then on these clips, they had these little side pieces and I just kind of clipped those off and then sanded these because it is kind of a tight fit. So yeah, I just sanded all of that stuff away. Um, unplugged that wire. And then you could just solder to the board, but I'm doing connectors. That way I don't mess anything up, even though I don't have a warranty on it anymore. So, but yeah, so even with this cable, you're still gonna need your three in one cable for your power and the HDMI. So we'll just unplug that really quick. But um, yeah, so we'll just plug these in to how this wire was originally. So red furthest, green. So. And they should be right next to each other. And that will kind of leave a bare pin next to that. Okay. And then I'm gonna put this coming out the bottom for now. That way we can do a test. <clears throat> so let's open up the software really quick. And then the next thing is just figuring out where you want this cable coming out. I'm probably going to um, carve a hole out somewhere over here. Um, other people I've seen, they drilled the hole in the back and then they ran the wires through and then soldered the ends. Um, I guess I could have done that, but yeah, I'll probably just kind of carve a section out of the back piece that, that will sit and then I can just put the back piece on. But yeah, so you still need your three in one cable for the power. So we're just gonna temporarily put this back piece on and then we can run a test. So I'm just gonna have this cable coming out the bottom. And I'm just gonna clip this one side probably just so I can put the power cable through it. So. cable will activate the tablet so yeah I see nothing works right now So when I connected it, the cursor was a little away. So to fix that, I had to go to uh, file preference. I've done this in the past before, but yeah, switching, yeah, file preferences, tablet, clicking tablet PC, 
and then switching it back to WinTab, and it should line your cursor back up to the uh, pen. So, and the other nice thing, uh, I mean, you're not gonna be able to see it, but you can actually turn the tablet off, and if you want to just look at your monitor instead of having your head constantly down, it actually will still work as a regular tablet. And that's, yeah, so, and that's even without the three in one. So it kind of becomes just a tablet and not a display tablet. So, and with that, you just need the USB plugged in, so.